this is kind of embarrassing to admit, but for like the last few weeks, I've eaten dinner under the table with my son <laughs> <laughs> while my husband sits at the table. Welcome to the Holy Mess Podcast. I'm Joy. And I'm Becca. You think you're a mess? You're not alone. We share the things of life through the lens of faith and find the hope in all of it. On today's episode, one of us cried again, but it was for good reason. Another one of us had an incident where we realized we might be a bit too close to certain people in our life. Plus, Joy's going to go over how to know if you're being too responsible for someone else's emotions. But first, our messy moment of the week. So, I cried at dinner again. (laughs) Uh, I have wait, to tell wait, wait, you. wait. Is this in public again? Because I feel like that's a theme. No, I cry in public all the time. Okay. This was an at-home <laughs> cry. But dinner time, when you're trying to be together as a family, is supposed to be one of the sweetest times of the day. And I look forward to it all day at work as a working mom. And I stress myself out at the end of the day trying to get home as fast as I can. You've probably done this if, like, the dog needs to get out yeah. or something. So I'm super stressed. Then... I, as soon as I get home, I'm like trying to go quickly through traffic. I open the front door and my son just like runs to me, Becca. It's my favorite thing right now because he's in a stage where he really likes me and he did it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> he runs to me and I'm like, oh, buddy. And then my husband, who's super stressed, he's always making dinner while he's watching our son, while he's trying to, who knows, taking pastoral calls and stuff. And he looks over and because I opened the door quickly, I surprised him. And as it's all happening, he drops a glass bowl out of a high cabinet. And it just shatters everywhere. So it's kind of panic the second I open the door because my son is scared. I'm scared. I'm like, what was that? And my husband quickly goes, oh, my word, I'm bleeding. And he has blood like running down his arm. And I'm going, I don't do blood. I don't do blood. So this quickly went from happy moment. It was like a split second. Everything happened. Son's excited. You're yes. home. Hunter scared. Glass bowl <laughs> breaks. And he's like, I'm bleeding. It's all the emotions in one. And I had, I think it's when expectations don't meet reality. I would waited all day. It was especially because I had a really hard time taking him to daycare that morning. They had sent me a video of him going, Mama? And they were like, Mama's at work. They thought it was a cute video. What kind of questions you asking my son that he said? And then he was going, Dad, Dad. And they're like, Dad, Dad's at work too. And I was like, He asks about us. So I was weepy all day, Becca. Yeah. All day at work. Couldn't wait to get home and squeeze him. And then I'm trying to figure out if my husband needs stitches. He's going, I need a band aid. And I was like, A band aid? You're going to soak that thing. We need to apply <laughs> pressure. We need some gauze. We need first whatever. aid. Yeah. And I'm trying to make sure my son doesn't go in the kitchen where all the glass is because he doesn't have shoes on. So it was pandemonium. We finally sit down at the table, but I find out that my son has already eaten because my husband kind of got that out of the way. And I'm, I, I'm trying to get my husband's food. And when we go to sit down, what's happening right now is that my son wants me to play with him because I haven't been home all day. So he'll literally pull on my arm and say, Mama, play, Mama, play. Aww. And it pulls at my heartstrings. And <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing to admit, but for like the last few weeks, I've eaten dinner under the table with my son. <laughs> While my husband sits at the table and I feel really bad about it. But this time my son wanted to play in another room. And so my husband's sitting there kind of bloody and he's like, so I, I just have to eat by myself. So I felt pulled that my marriage needed me yeah. and my child needed me. And I just wanted to have a happy dinner with everybody, but it wasn't going to happen. And so I couldn't handle all the intense emotions and I just started weeping and my husband was like no what is what is this I'm the one bleeding and you're weeping he's very kind but it was like yeah it was not needed in the moment but I said I feel this every day it's when something comes yeah. to a head that I cannot wait to get home and I have expectations that it's going to be sweet and then I open the door and I feel pulled in every direction yeah. I don't know what to do which you already feel that way at work all day long I because do. you're getting videos of Judah saying mama mama uh, yes. yeah it's it's a, an all day thing and I even bring home my laptop often because I don't get everything done at work but I want to hurry and get home so then I also know that I should be doing work probably at the same time. And so I just, I said, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I upset him and sit here with you or upset you and hang mm. out with him. And I said, it's it's just a battle every night. And he's like, it's fine. Just go be with our son. So I just like sat and read books to my son while my husband ate dinner alone. And I don't have like a perfect resolution to this. That's where the Holy Mess podcast comes from. But I'm new at feeling pulled in a lot of directions and I'm trying to figure out how to balance it because my marriage is so important and I don't want to neglect that by trying to take care of my child and I don't want my husband to eat dinner alone every night with me at his feet playing under the table. 
but that's literally how it's been. And then the end of the story is that things were so stressful, all we did was pick up the main pieces of the glass bowl. And then the next morning, I'm down there, like, quickly making my son's lunch and stuff, and I feel this, like, sharp oh, thing in no. my foot. <laughs> and I thought, no. yeah, I thought just, like, I stepped on a dried piece of rice or something, and I'm trying to brush it off. But then every time I take a step, it hurts. And I was like... Oh, yeah, there was glass down here. And I start looking across the floor, and there's little shards everywhere. And I had glass stuck in my foot. So I was like, I'd be right back, baby, to my son. And I said, don't go in the kitchen. (laughs) And I went upstairs, (laughs) and I had to, like, get this piece of glass out of my foot. And I was like, my life is chaos. But it's also beautiful because I have these sweet moments with my kids. So if you feel pulled in a lot of directions and you don't always know who or what to choose and you're not even often on the list, I just want you to know you're not alone. I don't have kids, but I've been in that place, especially when Joey's in the hospital, Um, because when I'm at work, I want to be at the hospital. When I'm at the hospital, honestly, sometimes I want to be home sleeping and with the dog. And then when I'm home with the dog, I feel guilty that I'm nowhere seemingly productive. Mm -hmm. And someone told me once, you're not going to get 100% in every area every single day. And that is hard to accept. But once you accept it, you can at least focus on what you're doing in the moment. I have this terrible habit. When I take a vacation, I'm already dreading vacation ending on the on day one. I'm just always like, okay, the, the next thing's coming. The next thing's coming. And so I've had to enjoy. I have to work so hard on it. When I'm at work, I am at work. And unless a text comes through from Joey that I need to pay attention to, I just try to dive all the way in. To keep your brain at the office. Yes. And Mm -hmm. when I'm at the hospital, I try to just engage with my time with him, however limited it might be. And when I'm home, I am pouring into the dog, which I know sounds silly. because She needs it. She needs because she gets, you know, all antsy because things aren't normal for her either. And then I sleep. And I'm not saying I get it right either, but... Mm-hmm. I know that this is going to resonate with a lot of people because mm-hmm. you just you cannot get a 100 percent A mm-hmm. plus in every area. And that's hard. That's hard to realize. I, as a kid, I always wanted that A plus. And as yes. a, an adult, you're like, I I never get it. I'm never yeah. going to get it. And I've been in a season lately where there's been so much illness in our house that I feel like work is frustrated with me. I feel like, you know, my marriage, we could invest a lot better in each other. I could take care of myself better. I could spend more time with my kid where I'm not just like trying to clean him up and take care of him so he's not sick. And But I, but I have to accept that there are going to be seasons like yeah. that where you feel like you're letting everybody down and there's not enough of you and your time to go around. And you're saying just be present where you are and so I'm grateful for that because sometimes when you don't know what to do your friends have good advice so thank you for that (laughs) tell me your mess of the week so this is uh, actually kind of a wholesome story but the mess starts out with Joey did go to the ER last week when we were recording Mm -hmm. we were kind of um, figuring out if he needed to thankfully it was nothing major he didn't end up hospitalized which is awesome it's great basically he had just a very severe um, uh, what is it called uh where your small intestine is angry at you. Inflammation. Inflammation. That's the word. I'm like, I use that word all day long, every day. How come it's not coming to me? So he just had some bad inflammation. Um, and the good news is that he got some pain meds, which that has been such a struggle, Joy. I, I actually do want to take this side tangent for a second. Joey got sick uh, right before the opioid crisis blew up. Oh, so they, I did not watch the show on that, yeah. but I bet it would be insightful. There, um, So he was prescribed whatever he wanted, like candy in the beginning when he first got sick. And then they cracked down. And the frustrating thing is if you're chronically ill, you have chronic pain, your body gets used to a certain amount of pain control. Oh, no. And so he would go into the ER and they would treat him like an addict. And it was horribly unfair oh, and it got like the, they would not give him his pain meds yeah anything they'd be like here's a tylenol literally oh. joy my my husband you heard whose it, body is imploded yes oh, they would give man. him a tylenol and so uh he over time basically just stopped asking for the pain meds so last week when he went into the er i'm like you have obviously they see on your ct that you have this inflammation ask for the pain meds. People have gotten a lot more reasonable. And thankfully he did. They gave him what he needed, which really helped him get over the hump. Uh, But my messy moment actually comes from him getting it filled at the pharmacy. Our pharmacists are the absolute best. They're treasures. And this is an area where, again, we've been treated terribly at other places. There was one time he went to get a prescription filled and a pharmacist told him, are you dying? Because I only give this to patients who are dying. 
Like the audacity of someone to ask that. And for him to be like, kind of. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) How dare you ask me? So it took a long time, but we're finally at a pharmacy that just adores him. They know his birthday. They see him coming. They're like, Mr. Aker. And they're so kind. I love it. There was one time last fall I went in and when they realized who I was, because I was picking up his meds, they're like, we love your husband. He always brightens our day. He's just the very best. Like he's my favorite customer. And so after this specific ER trip last week, he called the pharmacy and said, is there any way you can fill this tonight? And they said, anything for you, Mr. Aker. What? And so he goes to the pharmacy, he shows up and they're like, can you have candy? And he's like, yeah. And they took his bag, they disappeared behind a wall, brought it back and had his um, opioids and a bunch of candy in a bag. (laughs) But I... I, They were like, y'all... Get the stash. Yes. We have a special customer. <laughs> yes. But it was it was just really, it was a sweet moment. But I wanted to share it as my mess because you should not be that close to your pharmacist. It is a bad <laughs> sign when your pharmacist knows your birth date by yeah. heart. When your pharmacist like knows your conditions and is willing to be on call for you. But I am so incredibly grateful that they're on his team. It's an unexpected place to find love and kindness yes. but I'm glad that you have because even the pharmacists who've probably been cruel are trying to do their job because yeah. they see really terrible things exactly and Absolutely. they see people trying to manipulate the system but you're like that's not my husband and you don't know him and I, I do know too that pharmacists are overworked and they are just they having really to are. approve medications all day long and if they slip up it, it could be deadly for someone if they oh. don't catch things if you know a pharmacist you should thank them today yes. they do they work crazy hours so I'm just grateful that we have pharmacists who not only are dealing with all their chaos but are still so kind to my little family on to our therapy segment which I'm excited about because Joy brought in a worksheet <laughs> Right before the podcast, Becca and I were hurrying today. We have a lot on our plate. And I kept being like, okay, Becca, come on. Because she had to keep running out the door. And then we got ready to start. And I went, wait, I have something in my car. (laughs) And I had to run and get a sheet. This is how you know you really got some problems when you're in counseling is when they say, here, take this home. (laughs) You're like, I got some homework. But it's it's so powerful and it's so good. I couldn't wait to share this with you. So it came up. Uh, I shared, I think it was in last week's episode, about an incident that happened at our daycare yes. with my son. I won't go into the details. They are way too complicated. But I was feeling pretty overwhelmed. And I ended up at a counseling session. And I was really upset for certain people in the situation And I had lots of sad feelings for them. And my counselor said, well, did you do anything wrong in this situation? And I said, no. And she's like, then why do you feel bad? Mm. And it was a pretty eye opening for me that I'm a super empathetic and sympathetic person. And so it can be a gift to share someone's emotions. Becca does this really well as an Enneagram for to meet someone in the place that they are. But there is a place where it tends to move to an unhealthy mannerism. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today is the difference between being responsible to others and being responsible for others. This is something that I definitely need. Oh, as you do? You, as you mentioned, the Enneagram 4 stuff kind of creeps into areas where it doesn't belong sometimes. Okay, so I want you as you're listening to think of someone in your life that you tend to share their emotions mm. or a recent situation where you got really upset Um because of someone or with someone. And I'm going to read you the differences and you just kind of compare and you can tell if you're in a healthy place with it or not. So if you're responsible for others, this is not healthy. This is the things that you do. You try to fix them. You try Uh to protect. Oh, no. (laughs) Becca's already upset. (laughs) You try to rescue, control, carry their feelings. You don't listen or you join in. But here's the healthy side, because a lot of that doesn't even feel like it's a bad thing to me. I'm like, that is me. I'm like, aren't we supposed to care for others, but aren't we supposed to carry their feelings? So here's the opposite of all of those. If you're just responsible to someone, which is actually what we're called to do, you show empathy, you encourage, you share, sometimes you confront, you have reciprocal relationships, reciprocal, that's hard to say, relationships, and you listen. And so that's the healthy way to respond to them. So you can show empathy without trying to fix them. You can uh, encourage them without taking ownership of their feelings or trying to rescue them or help. Um, And then here's a couple other little ways you can tell. Um, If you're feeling responsible for others, you're going to feel tired, anxious, 
blamed, liable, vulnerable, maybe even inadequate. Explains a lot. But if you're responsible to others, you feel at peace with yourself, relaxed, free, aware of reality, and good with yourself. Especially when the situation may not fully be yours. It's just interesting that... I tend, if I have any part in something, I tend to take ownership of it because something happened with my child. Certain teachers are in trouble at the school because they didn't follow protocol. And I love these teachers. And so I felt so bad that they were in a tough spot, but had nothing to do with me. Like, I don't need to feel bad. I can be sad that the situation is difficult for everybody, but not take ownership. And so that's something that I'm really learning. It says it's it's good to learn to be a helper, a guide, and a friend. And that means you're just responsible to people. So the Bible verses that we look to about like carrying each other's burdens and all of that, when it's done healthy, you're responsible to how you treat people and how you interact with them. But you are not responsible to Jesus for how someone else reacts. And you're not responsible in a lot of situations with life how anyone else reacts. Well, even as you were reading the very first column you read, all of the things that you do if you're responsible for someone, there are things in there. It gets to it. Go, you go, went on the list. I'm like, OK, that's that doesn't sound like a bad thing. That doesn't sound like a bad thing. But then you get into the territory of not actually listening to someone. If you're just constantly trying to absorb, 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 all of a sudden you're actually not caring for their emotions because you're all worked up on your own. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Like, instead of being like, man, I see that you're hurting, all of a sudden you're like, well, I'm hurting now, and it has nothing to do with you in all reality. And a mindset that I've never thought about is when I was talking to my counselor about this, um, you are talking about a specific person, and she said, that person is totally capable of handling this on their own. In fact, if they feel incapable, this may be a situation where God is going to grow them and change them and give them an opportunity to see some areas where they can improve. And this could end up being a really good changing moment in their lives, in their career. And you trying to get in there and like feel the emotions for that person doesn't change that like they are capable they can handle it you don't have to handle it for them and the the, i just noticed a little line at the bottom of this paper that she gave me that's so good it says when confronting in love validate their feelings and their capabilities to handle their own problems that's really beautiful and that's that way too like you're helping them grow too and i think even like as as judah grows up this is something that you can probably carry forward because i know the first time that he comes home from school and a child was mean to him or and I know it's a bit different because you are technically responsible for your child. But nah, giving, his problems will always be mine. <laughs> give him the tools to take care of those problems. I forget I'm supposed to apply this stuff to my kid. <laughs> I'm like, we were one once upon a time. Everything that he feels, I'll totally feel. Hey, you have a few years. It's all good. Yeah, hopefully we'll like, so I'll slowly be able to teach him these things. <laughs> On to our mess and bless of the week. Uh, my mess is, uh, we've talked before how much we review, we depend on reviews online. Yeah. We even did the story about the legging review of the woman who was talking about falling down the hill. I meant to buy those. The leggings were amazing. (laughs) So did you know that one third of reviews on major sites like Amazon or Walmart are either robots or hired typists? That makes me sad. One third of them. And then it gets worse. Yelp has had this like investigation recently where they have elite members that basically... Because they've done so many reviews, you you know you can trust them. But those elite members are selling reviews to different businesses. So they're saying, hey, I'm an elite member. People trust me on Yelp. If you give me $50, <gasps> I'll give you a good review. And they never even ate that Kung Pao chicken. Exactly. Oh, I'm ticked. Mm-mm. Exactly. I, I always look at the reviews. Yes. And I have wondered, like, is is there anything in here that's not genuine or that, yeah, that they, that they have people that they're just like, they work for the company yeah. and they go in there and do them. But this makes me really nervous. And so now you probably have to read 30 of them before you even know. My favorite things to do in reviews is one, go to the pictures, especially if it's clothing items. I'm like, I want to see what it looks like on you. And secondly, I always look at the negative ones. I like yeah. to start with the one and two stars because sometimes people will complain about really silly things. They're like, the hoodie strings are too long. One star. <laughs> it's like, well, I can deal with that. So it can't be that bad. I like to start with the mess. It's kind of a theme in my life. That makes sense for this podcast. <laughs> Don't leave us a one star review, but Becca will read it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'll read it first. Okay, so my mess of the week is something that I've never had to think about before, but we all should. That when we die, our social media sticks around. 
we're in this digital world now. And so they're saying that there are tech things that we need to set up before we die. So that's why it's my mess, because none of us want to think about this. But here's some really insightful stuff. There's a legacy contact you can add to your Apple account. And then after you pass away, that contact can access your photos, your messages, your notes. You just go to your password and security in your iPhone settings, like if you want your spouse to have your photos or something like that. And then, this is pretty cool, on Facebook, there's a memorialization setting. And you can name a contact, and then they can have access to your Facebook and turn into a memorial page. I've actually seen this and I think it's a really smart move on Facebook's um, part because I can't imagine I've had people pass away who are in my friends list still yeah I can't imagine the pain of their family members when Facebook is still like so and so has a birthday today oh. and just that's crushing mm-hmm. but when they turn it into a memorial page it, it becomes it's more appropriate you know absolutely it's right where it belongs and they if no one has access to it. It's just stuck in its forever form yeah. out there on the internet. And you want to, you want someone that you trust to have access to this. And then the final one is like on Google, if there's, well, I don't even know if I should share this, but there might be someone it applies to. If there's stuff that you don't want anyone to see on your <laughs> in your life or on your computer, you can set it up just so that continually every few months, like everything that has to do with your Google is wiped. I, now that I say that, if you're choosing to do that, you probably need to examine your life. Okay, <laughs> you say that. However, what are you googling? I have some weird Google searches, and I I'm not going to share specific ones, but I don't think all the way through the question in my head. And you're like, if someone were to find this, it'd be weird. They would. I would. I'm probably on a watch list already <gasps> because you just think things, and you're like, I wonder. Do 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 do. And then Google's like, uh, why did you type this? Here's <laughs> all this Google terrible weird information. Oh, Sometimes. No. Well, you're I, in this weird medical world with your yes. I can't even imagine. Well, I having have, to even Google what happens when you don't have a stomach. And you know, you've had to do this. I will say, Google does a decent job. There, for example. Um, they will give you, um, and this is a bit of a trigger warning, but they will give you the suicide hotline number if you oh, Google certain amazing. things. Oh, that's amazing. I grateful. did not think that my Google searches would lead to that. But there was no did. intentionality in that. Mm. But then after I typed it in, I'm like, oh, I can see how you, I can see how you got that result. So <laughs> for me, it might be good just to not leave my family with any weird questions yeah. after my passing. Absolutely. So it's just, it's sad to have to think about it. That's why it's my mess, but it's good to be prepared. My bless has to do with how women can do everything. There's a woman who is running for a state Senate seat in Minnesota, and she was actively in labor as she's giving her speech. That means we can help achieve safe and sustainable communities and strengthen our human and public infrastructure. Excuse me. know if you can hear in that audio but she's saying things and then at the end she goes oh excuse me and she's having to take a moment because she's actively having a contraction on the stage what was she doing it must be very important i guess very important the sad news is she did end up having to drop out of the race not because of having a baby and she did deliver a healthy baby girl everything's good with her little family uh she dropped out of the race because just she didn't get enough votes it wasn't anything that she did but i i love seeing stories like this one there is um i think it's the president of new zealand who has like given birth in office and stuff like that it's just it's just cool to read those stories and be like okay we can do this yes let's (laughs) let's go there i love it and i i hate that she had to do that but i love that she kept going she's like this is important and i'm gonna push through the pain she either has a high pain tolerance or that's not her first rodeo not her first kid I don't think I've really heard the story of you going into labor. How Uh, long did you labor at home before you went to the hospital? I actually was induced. That's why you haven't heard it. Because it was like nothing exciting. We just like went to the hospital early in the morning. And then they like started the drip and broke my water. But once the, well, I don't even know what a normal contraction feels like. Because I had the contractions that are also brought on by something called Pitocin. And they say they are much more extreme. I've heard that. So when they started, I was kind of like, oh. And then within an hour, I was like, oh. (laughs) And I was like, get me the epidural. How long did you labor? Uh, maybe like two hours, three hours, nothing major at all. And you had an epidural? Yeah. Okay. I was like, I, <laughs> I was like, can we put it in before we even start? And they were like, oh, I don't know. Can if we, we put it in that. at six months? I <laughs> but I like did kind of like to be able to move around. So once you get it, you have to be willing to like. <laughs> 
be stuck in the bed. Can I tell you a really funny story yes, that no one asked for? Yes. After they gave me the epidural, <laughs> we did not know we were going to take this No. Bed. I could still feel um, some pain on one side of my body really bad. And so... Uh, I couldn't even open my eyes. I was just like holding on to the bed rail. And I just, they kept being like, we're going to check on you in 15 minutes and see if the medicine has kind of like worked, but it just wasn't. So they said, okay, we're going to like give you some more juice. So they put even more juice in my epidural. So I went like so insanely numb from the waist down. But about 10 minutes later, I said to my husband, I was, you can't move your body. So yeah. I said, can you help me get comfortable in the bed? I said, there's this like pillow, this, this pillow underneath me, I need to be moved. It's like really uncomfortable that I'm sitting on. And so he's trying to help me. And he's like, where? And I'm, I'm going this. I'm like hitting, I'm going, this pillow, this one, move it. And he just goes, that's your butt. <laughs> you couldn't even tell the difference between your body and the bed. I was like, that? <laughs> I couldn't feel it at all. I thought it was a pillow. That's a foreign object to me. <laughs> and I'm a curvy girl. And so I was like, it's, wow, that's uncomfortable to sit on. I do that every day. <laughs> I was like, I want it moved. That's so funny. Do you have a new appreciation for that part of your body from then on? I was like, holy cow. It's, that's why God gives them to us. It's like sitting on a pillow. It's a built-in pillow. It's so good for our joints. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, where are that we? That was a great rabbit trail. Uh, we just need your bless. My bless of the week is from... Someone named CJ. They were really grateful for their uh, UPS delivery driver. And so they decided to leave a little cash as a thank you out on the front porch, which is so sweet. And the video ended up going completely viral because what happens is you see the delivery driver on the ring doorbell come up to the door see this little envelope, he reads the card, and then sees that there's money in there, and then he does something on his phone, and the audio is so amazing. Sorry, Aunt F. You have no idea what you have just done for me. None. I just lost my mom a few days ago, and this money is going to help pay for those bills. Thank you so very much, my angel. This is proof. Mom is still watching over me. Oh, so he was he's deaf and yeah. had to type that on his phone to have it speak for him. And isn't oh. it amazing that we can do that with devices now? Because he was signing, I love you, and wasn't able to use the words. And so he just typed the message into his phone, played it for her ring doorbell, and she said she can't stop watching it because there's no way she could have known his no. mom passed. And funerals are so expensive. But I feel like God ordains those things. The perfect timing and the perfect guy to receive this who was on on her route that day and who needed the money i we have a saying in our family and this is going to sound like a brag i promise i don't intend it to be but um that we're never too stretched to say yes so Mm. if a friend has a gofundme or anything for medical stuff like we're gonna we're gonna follow up because we know how tough that can be and you never know how just a little bit of money a little bit of noticing someone on a tough day Mm -hmm. how far it can go and obviously that's that's changing two people's lives forever with that story Thanks so much for listening. If you got something out of this episode, please share it with a friend and leave us a review. That's how more people get to share in this messy family. And if you have anything you want us to know, please email us holymess at wayfm.com. Welcome to the Holy Mess Podcast. I'm Joy. And I'm Becca. We share... You think you're a mess? (laughs) (laughs) You think you're right? You're not alone. We share the things of life through the lens of faith and find the hope in it, right? Yeah. Okay. Welcome to the Holy Mess Podcast. I'm Joy. And I'm Becca. You think you're a mess? <laughs> <laughs> you're good, Remember girl? at the beginning where I was like, we're so skilled. Remember? <laughs> Look, I did this last week. I think you said, and oh, yeah, I'm oh, Joy, yeah. like eight times. <laughs> oh, yeah. This makes me feel better. Okay. Welcome to the Holy Mess Podcast. I'm Joy. And I'm Becca. You think you're a mess? So are we. (laughs) Should we change it to so are we? (laughs) Obviously this week, yes.